All right, so in this video, I wanna just give you an overview of what you need to know to solve a limit problem. So some calculus courses involve a lot of work about solving for limits. I personally take the opinion that we don't need to spend quite as much time on limits, especially just in a calculus class that is preparing you for other sciences. So I am going to just give you a little bit of an overview of how you solve limit problems using two techniques. In calculus, limits are happening behind the scenes every time we take a derivative. The limit gives you the slope of the tangent line. That slope of the tangent line represents the derivative. So behind the scenes, we're always using limits. So it's good to know how to take some limits or to just understand a little bit about how they work. So in general, we have two methods for solving limit problems. The first is substitution, and the second is L'Hopital's rule. And really, we always start with substitution to see if it works, and if it doesn't work, then we do our second method, which is L'Hopital's rule. But we always start with that substitution. So when we use substitution, the basic idea is that if we have a limit that looks like the limit as x approaches a of some function f, all we do is just substitute in a for x. Everywhere we see an x in the function, we just replace it with a and see what we get, see if it works out. So we might say that the limit as x approaches a of f of x is just equal to f of a. We plug in a for x. So we use this method of substitution first, and then we need another method if it doesn't work. So let's do some examples where we practice substitution. Let's say we want to evaluate the limit as x approaches 9 of negative 3x plus 20. So in order to evaluate this limit, we're going to use substitution first. We replace that x with 9, so I have negative 3 times 9 plus 20. I'm getting negative 27 plus 20, which is just negative 7. Okay, so pretty straightforward. We just substituted in the value. We got a solution. It's negative 7. This limit is negative 7. Okay, let's try another example. So let's evaluate the limit as x approaches negative 2 of 10 plus x over x squared. So with this limit, again, we always start with substitution. We substitute in negative 2. I'm getting 10 plus a negative 2 all over negative 2 squared. This leads me to have 10 minus 2 over 4, which is 8 over 4. That simplifies to 2. So I substituted in negative 2. I got 2, and that is the solution to my limit. Okay, so whenever you're solving a limit problem, you're gonna feel really good if substitution works. That's gonna make you feel awesome if you can just substitute in the value and get what you need. Let's look at one more example where we use substitution, and I promise at the end I will tell you about L'Hopital's rule and what it means and when we use it. So this time, let's evaluate the limit as x approaches pi of sine x over x. So I substitute in pi for x. I have sine of pi all over pi. At pi, the sine value is 0, so I'm left with 0 over pi, which is just 0. So the solution to this limit is 0. Let's change it up a little bit, though, and you'll see a case where things don't work out quite as nicely. Let's look at this same function, but I'm going to take the limit as x approaches 0 instead of x approaches pi. So when I substitute in for 0, I'm getting sine of 0 divided by 0. Sine of zero is just zero, so I'm left with zero over zero as my solution after I substituted. But what does this mean? It's not like we're just dividing by zero, so it's undefined. We have zero divided by zero. This seems confusing, like maybe something has gone wrong here. So we actually have specific vocabulary for things like zero over zero, and we call them indeterminate forms. And this tells us that we need a different method for the limit. So we can't just use substitution. We ended up with this 0 over 0, which is an indeterminate form, and we're going to need another method. So let's get more into indeterminate forms, talk about what they mean, and then go through the method that you're going to use if you're substituting and you end up in one of these situations. So the indeterminate forms we might have could be 0 over 0. That was what we got after we substituted in. Or we could end up with something like infinity over infinity, these usually occur when we're taking a limit as x approaches infinity rather than a number. And there are actually five more indeterminate forms that can show up, but we're taking it pretty easy with limits in these videos, so I'm just going to look at these two. 
And when we get an indeterminate form after substituting, we need to use something called L'Hopital's rule to evaluate the limit. So L'Hopital was the person who came up with this rule, that's why it's called that. And people often abbreviate this as LHOP. I'll keep saying L'Hopital just to be a little more formal. The rule tells us that when we are doing a limit of a ratio of functions, and we get an indeterminate form when we substitute in A, then we can just take the derivative of each of those functions and do the limit again. So if we have the limit as x approaches a of f over g, we can rewrite it as the limit as x approaches a of f prime over g prime. So we're not doing quotient rule here, we're just taking the derivative of the numerator and dividing it by the derivative of the denominator and then evaluating that new limit. Okay, so let's try this out on the example we saw earlier, where we were trying to evaluate the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x. So we substituted in 0, we got 0 over 0, and this is one of our indeterminate forms. So what we're going to do instead is rewrite the limit as the derivative of the numerator divided by the derivative of the denominator. So I still have the limit as x approaches 0, but I'm taking the derivative of sine over the derivative of x. The derivative of sine is cosine, and the derivative of x is 1. Now I can just repeat my process of substituting. I have a new limit to consider. It's the limit as x approaches 0 of cosine over 1. I substitute in 0. I have cosine of 0 over 1. Cosine of 0 is 1, so I have 1 over 1, which is 1. Okay, so initially with how the problem was written, I got an indeterminate form, and I couldn't see what was going on. But after some simplifying, using L'Hopital's rule, and getting a new limit that we could look at, I got 1 as my solution, and I have successfully evaluated the limit. Alright, so that was just a little introduction into L'Hopital's rule and evaluating limits in general. Remember, we always try substituting first. If that doesn't work and we get an indeterminate form, like 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, we have to use L'Hopital's rule. Once we've done that, then we can try substituting again. Alright, thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.